Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. My name is Keith. This is Doug, and it's episode number 28 of season two. I think I got it right this time, unlike yeah. last episode. Hey, we've got some coffee on board. We're ready to go. Well, you got coffee. I still need coffee. So I'm going to apologize in advance if um, I'm a little sluggish, if I'm a little Dougie today, if you will. I'm going to... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to switch roles for once, just see you, how it feels. You, you're going to be the sharp one on this one, because I may be a little dull, so everybody's going to have to forgive me. So, But yeah, this is an episode that's been a long time in the making. Uh, we are going to, for our main topic, jump into Doug's adventure at the Apple Store. What? did I, I, I said made it there. I said Apple Store. I didn't say Android Store, just so no, y'all know. But before we do that, what do you want to do? Cue up the... Nerd news. Let's there we it. go. Nerd news. Which is some interesting ones this morning. So, if you are an Amazon Prime member, which a lot of people are, let's be honest, uh, you can get the Lord of the Rings Lego games uh, on Amazon Prime for free through October. Um, <clears throat> now the ones that, uh, let's see here. I, I'm not sure if it's just the Hobbit. Oh, no, it's not. And we may have talked about this kind of once before, but I think they added Lego, the Hobbit. So you get Lego, the Hobbit, uh, you can get, it's not just Lego games. You get middle earth shadow of Mordor game of the year edition. Did you ever play this? I have not, but I heard really good things about it. It's, it's excellent. It's a very like, uh, it's open world and it's very sneaky game. But it's hilarious, too, because when you sit on the perch and you listen to the orcs talk, they're hilarious. I mean, it's it's a very immersive game. Ah, there. Lego Lord of the Rings. Nice. And oh, there's there's, oh, wow. there's a That's massive cool. list. There you go. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> they have all the expirations in there. Uh, Arcade Paradise, which I know I grabbed that one. Borderlands 2, Borderlands Prequel. Uh, if you like card games, uh, let's see. Kerbal Space Program. I have it. People love it. I haven't been able to get into it because I think the controls and the interface are a little odd, but I'm, yeah. I'll figure it out someday. Uh, Indiana Jones Lego. All the original adventures. Uh, Loop Hero is good. Midnight Fight Express. And I played that one. Um, Stray Gods. And then Tales from the Borderland. Very nice. So all of those games you can get for free if you're a Prime member. You just got to log in, type in, the honestly, Prime Day free or Prime Free games. And they'll get them so have you snagged any of these yet i have uh i that's what i did uh, i've got a client they have a client now you can download not just a website and uh I they have just, a client i forgot yeah. about that do i have that installed uh lego indiana jones i just actually claim that to mine um it's similar to epic games uh so if you all out there do not have epic games account they give free games monthly and they've given some big games away i've gotten grand theft auto 5 once hmm. um they do a lot of stuff during black friday and you really need to watch uh amazon prime games during black friday because they give some big big titles away usually that's a free. that's a good tip too and you just remind me i just checked like I forgot they had a client. I've been grabbing these off the website and I had rebuilt my machine like over a year ago and I never reinstalled it. Yeah. That would make it so much easier. Yeah, now I know what I got to do this weekend. Thank you. I so forgot, all, thing, forgot yeah, about that. Yeah. The thing I do, I have this stream deck. I uh, have steam Epic games and Amazon games programmed into my stream deck cool. every week. You know, I just boom, 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 hit all three, open them up, check the free game. So it's kind of routine for me. Hmm. to uh, fill my library up. Yeah, that's... I, but then the question awesome. comes, you know, we've talked about that. The question comes, they're giving you all these free games. Can they just easily take it back from you? I think you we've know, had this conversation in the past. I, I don't think they can, because I think when they give you a free game, uh, it is the equivalent to you getting a key and adding it to your library, which is akin to purchase. Okay. Um. So... The only way you would lose it if the company, like, you know, completely went under. Um, so, I don't know. You know, that's a really good point. I, I, I don't think they can. Most of the time where you see it as a problem is when you're paying for a um, game library access through a service. Like, and through Xbox Live, yeah. PlayStation. Well, yes, yeah, stop playing. But I've had this both now on PlayStation and Xbox Live. I'll have one that's a part of their library. I'll have it added. 
And then all of a sudden, I noticed at least on the place, there's a little lock. And I had to Google it. <clears throat> and it basically says, well, yeah, um, it's not it's not a part of that service anymore. And the only and it says it, though, the only way I can get it is if I bought it, which tells me then they can't take it away. Yeah. So, yeah, something to definitely be mindful of, though. Definitely. All right. Now, I think when I did my share, I probably only shared that tab. I'm going to click a tab. No. Yes. So I need to actually share my whole browser. I apologize. Uh, you know. Like I said, no coffee, man. I'm I'm struggling. I'm going to get coffee after this. We're so still just... doing good. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Let's go screen window. There we go. Much better. It doesn't let me switch tabs if I just do straight up tabbing. All right. <clears throat> Next up, I'm going to let you take this bad boy. Yeah. Next up, uh, Sony just released a 30th anniversary PS5 Pro. In the original PS1 colors, you got that uh, gray with some uh, pops of color in there. Uh, yeah. The logo is just so beautiful up there. If I needed a PS5 Pro, that would be the one to get because it just gives you that classic feel of day one uh, PlayStation 1 vibes. Sorry, it looks it's, really good. Instagram was just, I hit accidentally hit play on that video. Instagram was blaring in my ear and I couldn't mute it. If I didn't say anything, that's why I see guys. I am off the rails. See, I, I'm having a Dougie morning, guys. Doug's, Doug's, Doug's leading this thing. You're, no, you're, you're doing good. He'll get you through it. So, yeah, so, if I didn't uh, say anything, <laughs> it was like blaring in my ears. I'm like, oh my God. Then so, you yes. didn't hear what I said. We're good. I did not. It was all I heard was just music just going nuts in my ears. Dear Lord. All right. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. If, we talked about this. I don't want a $700 PlayStation Pro. No. I don't need it. I don't think it's worth what they're asking. They should have kept it at 500 bucks, in my opinion, yeah. uh, and then lowered their other tier. I don't think what you get is quite worth it because it's all graphic stuff. And at the end of the day, most people are giving it static because you can't um, tell the difference with the side-by-side. -side. But I will say this. That's a beautiful color. You can almost achieve the same thing, though. You can buy fins. That's what they call these plastic things. You can pop those off and customize them. Um, and I know that controller is probably going to be sold. I, my, honestly, I love the controller. That's my favorite. Yeah, if you could just buy that uh, retro color controller, I think I would. they will sell like crazy. Yeah, I have a, a maroon one right now that I use the heck out of. It's, it's like, well, it's red because red's one of my favorite colors. And yeah. But this thing, ooh, I would buy this in a heartbeat. So I'm pretty sure... They're going to release that. Now, Did you probably know this, but do you know what they did for grips on these? Can you see that? Oh, I did not know that. It's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, uh, little X's and triangles. For the 30th. Yeah. yeah, for the 30th. Normally, it's just the configuration of the buttons, the triangle, square, yeah. circle, X. But they put the little 30 in there. Nice that little touch not, there. I, and that blows my mind, you know, uh, to say that we're getting old, but 30 years ago... <laughs> Oh, we're getting old. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. It is a little weird. I remember the PS1 on re release day. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's I, I remember so many console launches. I remember yeah. standing in line for the 360. remember the first Xbox I got. I remember getting my Dreamcast, for crying out loud. You talk about, you know, blast from the past there. Oh, yeah. That was 99, right? Dude, at least. Mm -hmm. I think I got mine in the early 2000s. I don't know if I got mine like right in 99, but it was around that time, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a it's a beautiful, very well done um, 30th edition. Oh, the Portal. They did. They have a Portal version of that, That's you know, nice. the, the stream. And I will say this. Brian's been on our podcast. I got a chance to mess with his. It's a beautiful little device. And it was, it swayed me a little bit. I was like, hmm, maybe. But. I just I'm not mobile enough for it, but the screen on it is big. It performs so well. He let me mess with it. What really surprised me were two things. The sound was really good off of it, but the haptic feedback. So these controllers, the PlayStation 5 controllers already have haptic feedback where if it's raining, it actually feels like it's tinging on your hands. Oh. And it vibrates. It's like nothing you've ever It was integrated into this. <clears throat> and I think the game we were playing was Stray, the one with the cat. And when it would purr, the way it would vibrate, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't kind expect. Of... Yeah, it, well, it was. It was like it's like you're holding. I don't, it's weird. Yeah. Um, but this thing had really good haptics in it, and I didn't expect that. So what's funny is people are starting to t come around on the portal, and they really like it. And the biggest thing was when it launched, PlayStation only lets you use it in your house. 
and then they did an update and you can play your PlayStation anywhere in the world. And so I think that's what turned it around. And now I honestly think that's what's fueling the rumors of Sony seeing the sales of these bump up uh, and they may do a Vita. I don't know if you ever had a Vita. But. Uh, I haven't. I've uh, played with one. Mm-hmm. Now, you may have already asked answered this question for me on a former podcast, but can you play this without a PlayStation? No. No. Okay. This is all streaming. A, mm-hmm. You have to have a PlayStation. Okay. Yep. Unfortunately. Um, but yes. The, now, uh, I'd have to ask Brian. Maybe, or I'd have to Google it. If you have the streaming service that you pay Sony for, which is their equivalent of the Xbox service, mm-hmm. um, it might be able to stream a game. So, I don't know. That's honestly a really good question. While well, you look that up, I'll flip through some of the other pictures here. Yeah. Uh, it looks like they also did the 30th anniversary colors for the, the headsets and also for the earbuds. And I'll tell you guys, I owned a pair of these headsets. They're not very good. They sound is meh. They go, oh, it's pulse sound. And I, I, I bought into it. I was like, oh, yeah. And I bought it. I couldn't stand them. And I ended up buying a, a, a Steel Series headset for my PlayStation. Far superior in quality, features. So don't mess with them. So, Yeah, everything I'm reading on this uh, PlayStation Portal is you have to have a PS5. Okay, so you can't even use their... St- you think they would open it up to so use their streaming service you for it? Think, especially when you spend that amount of money per year. And oh, by yeah. the way, the PlayStation streaming service—if you haven't, you probably heard me say it's—it's it's pretty decent. They've got a massive game catalog, you know, and uh, it's decent. Everybody goes on about Xboxes, which is great. Game Pass is awesome, but ooh, Sony's got some good stuff out there too. My biggest thing is just—it's freaking expensive. I had the the massive tier plan where you had all the playstation one on it i think it was getting to be like over 200 dollars uh, a year or something like that i yeah. scaled back to like the 80 dollar a year one or maybe it's like right at 100 and then but that gets you some of those titles but just not the deep cut catalog of ps1 if i want that i'll use my emulator so. all righty pretty cool colors there yeah now you you liked cyberpunk didn't you yeah i really enjoyed it you know there was always the uh, people having problems with it running and buffering and all this stuff. It ran flawless, flawlessly for me on my uh, computer. Big words yeah. in the morning. Or, That's fine. Yeah. PC did better than any of the console launches. Yeah. But since then, of course, kind of like the No Man's Sky game, they had a bad botched launch, but it went really, really well after they patched it. I've been meaning to go back and replay it because I've got the DLC, Liberty City. Haven't played that yet. And they say it's supposed to be awesome. I was talking to my son about this recently, and he said it's just, it's like a totally different game. It's so stable. It's good. Good experience. And he said Idris Elba is a uh, guest uh, voice or actor in it. Yeah, he is in the DLC. He's an actual actor in it, yeah. Yeah, the game, just to talk about it real quick, you know, it started with all these problems, but that... uh, fix uh, or the update uh, added car combat and all kinds of stuff and it does run flawlessly yeah and so why we're talking about this the actual news pieces is that netflix has been doing this a lot they're getting into the specific ip properties and they're doing anime versions of them probably because it's a lot cheaper to produce Uh, so there's going to be an anime of cyberpunk uh from cd project red no i'm not a big anime guy like um, you know, my son, he's into some of them. Like he likes uh, the Ghibli studio, like Howl's moving castle, things like that. So I've seen them in passing. I'm aware of them. And then of course, to me, the only anime I ever really liked was Akira, which is like way nineties. <laughs> uh, but I've never been into anime. However, if it's got a, a theme or an IP, I like, like I love DC did a whole series where they took the comic books and they adopted them to anime. Like um, the last joke, which was a Joker run, uh, you know, the son of Batman, uh, Infinite. Uh, I think it was like uh, Infinite Wars. Uh, well, no, that's Infinity Wars. Crisis on Infinite Earth. That's it. That was so. All these DC ones, they adapted them, and they have a lot of them either on HBO Max or even some on Netflix. At one point, those are really good because I think I know the characters. I'm familiar with it, and I, I don't know. It's I don't know. I, I'm good with it. The one I want to watch now. And I think I messaged you about it is Terminator. So Netflix has a Terminator anime. And I was telling Doug before the podcast, I was reading when it launched, it's one of the few animes that have launched that have a hundred percent rotten tomatoes. 
uh, on it. Now, I don't know if that standing has held. We will check. NMA. Uh, it's at an 86. Thank you. He beat me I to was the trying punch. to get it quick. No, I appreciate it. Okay. That's still pretty dang good. Yes. And I love me some some Terminator. So if they keep going, then, you know, there's talks about them doing other ones, whether it's, you know, Alien, Predator. I'd watch all of those. So, I don't know. What are your thoughts on anime? Did you ever get into that? Uh, I did a little bit. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, I don't know if oh, that's yeah. uh, considered an anime. It I is. I, well, it, <clears throat> I consider an anime. Yeah. yeah. I used to watch that every day after school. I'm going to go on a soapbox for just a second and say that the cartoons and the animation of today, I do not like it. I like the old days, um, like Treasure Planet, stuff like that, if you know that kind of animation I'm talking about. Oh, totally. The the classic Disney animation. Yeah. The hand-drawn stuff. And I don't know what the style's called, so I can't properly say it, but... That uh, style of animation versus today's style of animation, I liked a lot better. A lot of today is Pixar. They don't do a lot of hand-drawn stuff, honestly, um, unless it is uh, one of these type of anime. But anime has its own style. It's got a certain frame rate. It moves a certain way. Um, characters are typically drawn a certain way. It's a whole subculture, but <clears throat> I appreciate it. I just i have never really gotten into it deep. So. I had friends that did in high school. They were some, like, Cowboy Bebop. A bleach. I've seen one or two of those. But... Some of them got adapted to actual live action on Netflix. I know Cowboy Bebop did, but it didn't do well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate it. I have a respect for it. It's just never been my jam. So, I'm going to definitely check out this, though, the Cyberpunk. Now, there is a Cyberpunk Edge Runners already on Netflix. Have you watched that? No, I forgot it about is, that. Uh, you just reminded me. Adult. I'm just letting everybody know it's there's some, Cyberpunk. Uh, nudity, uh, <laughs> drug themes, stuff like that. So it's not really for the kids, but I uh, enjoyed it. It's weird, but it is Cyberpunk. It is. Well, Cyberpunk's pretty rated R. Yeah. yeah. Gabriel so and I were Cyberpunk, talking. Cyberpunk uh, Edge Runners is already on Netflix. It's so funny. Gabriel, my son and I were just talking about this last night. <clears throat> well, I had to take him and drop him off somewhere. And we were talking about this particular thing here and it was funny because i was saying he's like oh you got to get back into playing it they got all the bugs patched and uh, he's like i i did every accomplishment i got over 100 hours into it nice. and he said that um you know we were just going back and forth on it. i said yeah there's a lot of you know adult themes in it keep in mind he's like 19 he's an adult and uh i said yeah it's just weird because my playstation's in the living room and if you know, I'm playing it. Granted, all my kids are older; they can handle it. I mean, my youngest is 16, yeah. but you know, my 16 year old daughter's walking through the room, and one of the very first missions, you're you're saving a a, a naked uh, person, and as you're carrying her, her boobs are all over the screen, uh, and it just you look like a pervert. You're you're yeah. walking around in a video game carrying a naked woman. Granted, you're trying to save her and get her to a balcony and all this, but and they force you to go into like strip clubs and things like that. It just it's got a great story. It's a great game, but if somebody just walks in the room, they're like, oh. I'm pervert <laughs> playing porno games. <laughs> There's always a meme of this is the game you're playing. Oh, this is the I've game seen that. you're playing when your mother walks in. That's exactly what it is. I've seen that meme. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's all like, I think it's, they did it with Grand Theft Auto. They did with the, uh, they, they show like the really cool scenes that you're driving in the city and all that. And like, this is the game that you play on your own. And this is what it's like when your mother walks in. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you're in the strip club on, gta <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah all righty next up this is interesting so this is kind of in my wheelhouse um <clears throat> it stuff now i knew this was coming down the way i didn't know it was this soon microsoft is launching a windows app for iphones macs and androids and of course even for windows what is it well this app allows you to stream a virtual windows computer to any device from the cloud now, they have something called Windows 365, which is their cloud-hosted virtualization platform, mm -hmm. uh, or Azure virtual desktops. And then, of course, you can do remote desktops and more. Now, most of this plugin is like for you to get into a cloud PC. The real question is whether it's going to allow you to remote into your home PCs. Can you stream your home PC to this app? Like, for example, if I have a gaming machine I'm on right now, it's a Windows 11 machine that I built. Uh, if I wanted to get to this on my iPad from somewhere else in the world, that's what this would be. Um, 
I don't know if the app is going to allow that just yet. It doesn't mention remote desktop, but the way that they market it, it's all about getting access to your virtual uh, computers inside of the cloud. Now, I'm excited about this just because in my career path, this is my area of specialty is virtual computers. Um, the company I work for, it's what we do. And uh, I like to say we're probably the best at it. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that we have partnerships with Microsoft and I'm pretty sure even if it's not just straight up Windows 365, one of some of the partnership partnership stuff that we have is a lot of companies will host virtual Windows computers using my company's software. It's called Horizon uh, inside of Azure. So this app may be another mechanism to get to that. Um, but, you know, we're able to deliver already through browsers and, you know, we can it's kind of like Netflix. I always tell people like it's like how a Netflix movie streams to you through a browser. What we do is we can stream a Windows computer to you through a browser. And we have partnerships with uh, with Microsoft on it. So, yeah, man, I don't know if you have a need for this or not. You're, you're getting in deep in all this technology stuff. So, I don't know. You may need a virtual cloud computer, right? I, may, I might. You know, I've uh, set one up before, just kind of basic uh, virtual machine. Not yeah, a, you can do it locally. Uh, yeah. Computer. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> I, I understand the concepts. I'm just going to have to have some lessons. I think if I did more, what I'm trying to say is I would want like a my own cloud server at home for all my files and stuff. Oh, yeah. I think if I set that up, I would use it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a lot of different reasons. I mean, really, it's and you can tell by the video, it's very business. And the idea is that if you want to use Windows, but you want to be device agnostic, meaning I want to use Windows because my organization is all Windows apps. However, I love my iPad. I'm like Doug. I'm now I'm now locked into an Apple ecosystem, but I still want to use Windows every now and then. So think of it that way. And all of this notice, it's hospitals, it's people working somewhere else, it's business yeah. people. And that's because it frees up people to choose the device that they want, all while still not having to abandon the apps. Because honestly, for companies to switch apps, it's very, very expensive. That's the promise of virtualization, is that you can deliver even old legacy apps to any device. That's the beauty of it. So it's cool. I'm glad to see that uh, Microsoft is advancing this space. Are you hating on my copy of Word uh, 97? Oh my goodness! Let's, yeah, let's not. Let's not. Okay, go there. we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a good one you found. I'm gonna let you take it. Yeah. So uh, you've been in the nuclear field before. Yep. I uh, saw this pop up and I thought it was very interesting. Microsoft is uh, reopening, or at least activating. And tell me if I'm using the wrong term. One of the uh, towers or one of the cooling it's reopen. Yeah. reactors for yeah. uh, Three Mile Island. For those that don't know, uh, Three Mile Island did have a nuclear accident back in the 80s, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't even close to Chernobyl in uh, Ukraine, no. if people know about that one. But no. uh, it did raise some concerns because it's in the continental United States and the threat of radiation spreading to other states was uh, very scary. It happened. I, I hope I summarized that perfectly. But. You did. Close. It was uh, March 28th of 1978. Oh, 78. Okay. So now here's the thing for those of you, whether you're young, if you're older, you'll probably remember this. Um, nuclear was huge. It's kind of funny. If you ever play the Fallout games, there's a reason why everything's nuclear power because there was at one point in time and in history where nuclear was going to be the saving grace for all things electricity. Everybody loved it. Uh, then we had, of course, Chernobyl took place. Chernobyl was very specific in that um, it happened because, number one, they had the reactor in a pole barn. It wasn't shielded. <laughs> it was, uh -oh. well, I'm being dead serious. That's number one. Number two, uh -oh. the, the Russian government was redlining it. They were pushing it and doing testing to see how far could we run the reactor have it stay stable without our auxiliary backup power nice. and uh, to keep it cool. They basically were redlining it. How hot could it get before it melted down? So they caused it because they were pushing it. They were doing testing. And so that's what led to that. Um, <clears throat> Three Mile Isle Island, I, I, I did see a documentary on it once. It, it was far less of a, of a problem because obviously you can visit it you know it's it, it, it was contained within time here in the u.s we have so many controls in the nuclear space uh but what happened was when three mile Isle happened everybody started to get cold on nuclear like let's lean into coal 
because we don't want to die. And everybody thinks it's the same as like a bomb. They think that, oh, well, it's going to go off and I'll have a mushroom cloud. No, no, no. Nuclear plants are not the same as bombs. <laughs> bombs are a certain reaction with enriched uranium. This doesn't do that. It's completely different. Yeah. Now, if you had an event, yes, you could have fallout radiation and that could make people sick and it's bad for the environment. True. However, if you get to studying what we do in the U.S., we follow along with a partnership in you know, France and Germany. They've been doing it for years. They entomb a lot of these uh, reactors into concrete. They're very, very safe. So even if there is a meltdown, like Three Mile Island, it gets contained. And guess what? You can use it so many years later, kind of like what Microsoft's doing. Now, nuclear is becoming more popular because most people also don't understand the waste that means the uranium that depletes that they have to swap out every so often. That uranium is highly radioactive, and that is radioactive waste. But we're talking about pellets this big. They're really, really tiny, and they can entomb them. Um, funny thing is, if you let them sit long enough, like 100 years or so, they can be reused. So you don't have to mine new uranium. They can be reprocessed and reused. Now, you have to put them in a concrete tomb uh, that's lead-lined, and it goes in the ground, and... That's how they deal with nuclear waste. So it truly is renewable energy, and that is very reliable, puts out massive amounts of energy. What comes out of the top of those towers, by the way, is not smoke. <laughs> it's steam. It literally is cleaning the air because it takes water out of a river, filters it heavily, runs it through, and it uses that steam to keep the reactor cool. And that is steam that's released. And there's been studies that show that actually the air quality near nuclear plants is pristine because that's clouds coming out of it. Pure, clean clouds. I used to joke I worked at a cloud factory. Um, so that's a little background on, on nuclear. It's becoming that's popular very because very a, interesting. Well, AI is also very, very power hungry. So they're now looking at nuclear. Well, nuclear puts out a lot of power. It doesn't hurt the environment like coal does. This is a smart move on behalf of Microsoft because they're going to put a data center there and <clears throat> they're, they're, you know, there's always been talk about, well, we just need to have a dedicated nuclear power for the data center for AI because it's very power intensive. Oh, yeah. And then you're not hurting the environment. So I think this is awesome. It's great. Sorry for my little soapbox oh, there, Doug, yeah. but I have a lot of experience in this area. And so, and a lot of people are very, very misinformed. Yeah. So there's my little rant. I think it's cool. You're totally fine. And I agree with you. I mean, you know way more than I do, but uh, data centers, I cannot imagine the amount of power they need. Especially AI. Server racks uh, for miles, of, well, not miles and miles, but you know, mm, say 500,000 square feet. And you I'll got tell you what, racks in the you're not, building. no, you're not far off. You say miles and miles, like if, I've seen tours of uh, Amazon's cloud facilities, dude. We're talking like a SAM size they club. They just go on for days, right? Yeah, sometimes they're multi-level size of a SAMS or multiple SAMS clubs. But because you're not, you're not far off, actually. Now, uh, as an IT guy, how would you find the specific rack in a yeah. server farm? I mean, uh, to me, that seems crazy. Well, all of it is. There's a lot of ways they they do it. So all of it, everything is labeled extensively, and you have standards in how you label things. Uh, some of these really large facilities, they have softwares, uh, tracking softwares. Here's where it gets really nutty and gets really cool. They have near field RFID uh, on every single area. And they even got it to the point with some of these softwares that, oh, I have a problem in rack 34 alpha or 34 delta. Yeah. Apps that connect and they can like walk the facility and it tells you, it's like GPS tells them when they're getting oh, close to it. Yeah. And then everything's labeled like, dude, it's very very sophisticated you know because you like you said i mean i'm not in the it field but i'm thinking if i have one little board bad yeah on uh, server 200 of uh, yeah. fifty thousand. yeah the yeah. the boards are called blades you're spot on everything's labeled meticulously uh, and the same thing for cabling every cable's labeled you can find because you all most of the cables will be overhead inside of stanchions or trays that we have uh, and then all the powers ran under the floor and the subfloor and all the floor tiles can pop up it's, data centers are fascinating i've spent tons of my career in data centers uh, and now that we have ai the, the need for power is even greater but what one last thing about this is that you mentioned it bill gates is heavily invested in the advancement of nuclear power places like three mile island places like near us they're like old designed in the 50s and 60s we're talking massive reactors you know now we have micro nukes and what that means is they actually operate underground and they're already entombed 
so they're even extra safe. So if there ever was a meltdown, number one, it's really small. It's a small reactor. It's not the size of you know a massive building. Uh, number two, it's already entombed. It's already encased. You're not going to have it get out. Sorry, the sun's coming in. It's morning sun. You're not going to be able to see me. Let me fix this. Uh, so, um, yeah, so as micro nukes become more prevalent, it's going to be an answer, I think, to a lot of uh, this whole thing. To me, I, I, I think nuclear is the answer for us solving climate problems, solving the issue with needing more power for uh, EVs, if that ever takes off, for um, dude, AI. It's a, it just solves a lot of things. We have the answer. It's just there's these stigmas because of Three Mile Island that people are like all of a sudden in the 80s, like, oh, panic. Nuclear is bad. Well, I think if you look at all technology throughout the history, none of it's 100% safe. Yeah. There's risks with everything. You've got to have good controls in place. Yeah. All right. This last one kind of ties into our main topic. Did you see the movie 28 Days Later? I did. It was really good. It was a it. British uh, film, right? It was. It was. And yeah. it had an Irish actor, Killian Murphy. And he did a great job. I think that's his name. I hope I'm not saying that right. Yeah. Yeah. Killian Murphy. He was amazing. It was early in his career. Such a great movie. It's a zombie movie, but it's not. An, it's the first zombie movie that I saw running zombies. And there is a scene in 28 Days Later where they're. That. You know which scene it is? It's the one they're in the tunnel okay. and they're tire goes flat and they have yeah. to change a tire and i will never forget you see in the distance there's quiet running and it's just like a mob of them running at you dude that's the first one i was like yeah. oh my gosh anyway they are doing a sequel now they had a sequel that was 28 months later i don't he was not in it they went on to new characters and they told new stories well now it's 28 years later movie it was partially shot on the iphone 15 pro max now you are so worried about the phone yeah. and the camera, they wouldn't be shooting movies with these things if they weren't good. You, that excites me. I mean, I'm not going to make a movie. I just want to take some pictures of birds <laughs> and my dog and you can. some lizards on the porch now. So You can do an action movie with your with Honey, your dog. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's pretty cool that I wanted to put that in there. All right. Let's get to our main topic. So you had an adventure this week. It's I been did. a long time coming. Yeah. Uh, you did something that I hadn't done. So for those that don't know, which you should, if you're a regular viewer, Doug's an Android guy for many, many years. Uh, we, we love Android here. We're not going to hate on it. Uh, but there are merits to Apple and Doug decided to switch up and go back to Apple after what was your last one? iPhone five, iPhone four. Yep. Four. The See? whole antenna gate. <clears throat> exactly. So that's the last time you're in the ecosystem. Yeah. This time you bought directly from Apple. You did it a new, new way. I've never done that. You went to a place I've never been to to pick it up. You activated it in a different way I've never done. I want you to share with us what was the experience like for you? How did you do it? Where did you go? How did you order it? And then follow it up with what are your impressions so far? So many, so many 24 hours later. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I was going to, I have to start off with last year. I was going to buy an iPhone 15 Pro Max. You know, Pro Max, I'm not trying to be fancy, but I want just the best cameras because I'm the guy that takes the pictures for the family vacations and the trips and all that. So I wanted the best. Last year, I got some preliminary reviews from the people I trust, uh, CNET and The Verge and other YouTubers saying, hey, this iPhone 15 Pro has got some battery issues. I think I talked to you as well, and you're like, yeah, I've heard there's some issues with the battery. So last year wasn't really my time. So fast forward to this year, uh, I've watched, hey, we fixed all the iPhone 15 problems. Hey, we're on to the iPhone 16, and it's got Apple Intelligence. So I go ahead, I make my order, get the iPhone 16 Pro Max. The other issue last year was I ordered from Best Buy. Uh, I've got a credit card at Best Buy. It gives me some points or something, whatever. But then it kept delayed, delayed, delayed. So I thought, um, this is a third-party retailer. I need to go straight to the source. So this year I ordered straight from Apple. I had it sent to an Apple store thinking the Apple stores, instead of shipping it to me, might be safer because you have to sign for Apple phones at your house. I'd have to take off work. It's a whole headache. It's a whole thing, yeah. So uh, kind of skipping all this... Uh, rambling here i get to hey your apple uh or your iphones here i also ordered a watch it's uh very Ooh. nice i love it so far yeah 
I uh, go to the Apple store in a big old town of St. Louis. They have uh, it very well organized. Uh, there's a line outside, uh, ladies checking everybody in. But then I find out this line of like 30 people is people wanting to get an iPhone that haven't made an order. She's yeah. like, if you have an order, you need to skip ahead. Well, boom, straight to the front of the line. I get my phone in less than five minutes. Everybody is so nice. Uh, the funny thing is they look at my phone. They're like, oh, is that an Android? I'm like, yep, I'm making a big switch today. What and it's that? kind of a clap. They're like, yeah. They clapped? Well. They cheered? Are you well, serious? Just this one guy helping me. So That's hilarious. Like 30 Apple uh, people. They've all got uh, <laughs> clients or customers <laughs> getting phones. But he's like, yeah, woo, you're switching That's teams here. So. so funny. So here we go. If you, if you all have uh, never been to a an apple store yeah if you have a picture that'd be great go. they're all very uh, minimalist they're very minimal they've got these wooden tables now the wooden table is cool so it has a power like three little outlets he rubbed his hand on the table and this outlet pops up out of the table are you serious i thought what yeah what, so he... see the little square there on those tables go back yeah? one picture one picture that little square yeah right here little square. so you rub your hand on that it pops up and those are outlets to charge your phone I didn't know that. See, I, and I told Doug what's weird is I've only been to Apple stores in other countries. I've been in Germany, Austria, and Italy. And we didn't spend a lot of time that we just walked around because I was like, oh, there's an Apple store. I've never been. I want to go. Uh, I didn't spend any time in there. And I've never gone to any one stateside. So, see, Doug had all kinds of experiences that I didn't. So Yeah, to kind of explain it for those uh, listening only, you go into the store. It's uh, very nice and clean. Some wood tables, uh, there's iPhones and iPads and all the accessories that are around the wall. But then there's really nothing. There's a whole lot, and then there's nothing. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, it's kind of there's barren. There's just displays right? out there. It's, but it's I mean, minimalist. They were packed, yeah. Oh, my, my wife asked me, I told her you were going yesterday. And she goes, well, he's going to wait in line? I go, I don't think so. And so, Because I wonder what that was like for you. Because we've seen videos of people waiting in line to get the new iPhone. And I didn't know what that was about. I, I assume I didn't know if they had all pre-ordered. I didn't, I didn't know what the experience was going to be like for you. Yeah. So just like a, uh, a lemming, I have to call myself, you know, I see a line, <laughs> I get in the line, but uh, that was just for people trying to get an iPhone without making an order that day. Oh, that's so crazy. I get my iPhone, I get my watch. They direct me to an open table. They said, Hey, if you need help, we're right here, but we've got tons of customers. I said, cool. I can start setting up my phone. So I wanted to do a uh, unboxing on the show, but I wanted to also have a phone with some cell phone service as well. Well, you need a phone. Yeah, I kind of get it. We talked about doing that, but we didn't. It's no need yeah. to wait. It's it's enough to talk about the, the so the, experience. the big reveal here. I've got a uh, OtterBox case on it, and right. I've got the Retro Fish logo on my iPhone there. Look at that uh, iPhone 16. Uh, I've never had a pop socket, so my wife said uh, this will help save your fingers. It's it's awesome. It's good so, for a single, yeah. especially being a larger phone. It's nice having the pop socket because um, I like the larger phones as well. Sometimes you can't take your, I have small fingers. You know, yeah. It's like like being able to do this with my stubby fingers is tough with one hand. You have to have two because it's a bigger phone. But having that pop socket actually makes it to where you can do it. So the cool thing this year, and I uh, forgot my cameraman. I didn't pay him his dues. But uh, <laughs> this is now your camera button. It is touch Ooh. sensitive. So half a press, you can slide it back and forth. It's touch sensitive. That was all on the keynote address, but that's been really cool. Cool. I'm not, and I don't have that one, so that's that's awesome, man. So overall, like, <clears throat> so you went through, you bought the Strike from Apple, suddenly you had a great experience. You had texted me and asked me, like, well, how do I transfer my number? Like, and I'm used to, and I'm used, I'm familiar with eSIMs. Up to this point, the phones that I've had, you, you either have an eSIM uh or a sim and most of the phones i have have both and i've just stuck with sim because the advantage to sim is i can especially we we rotate them in our family between me yep. and the kids so i can pop my sim out hand it to somebody else yep. you know um and it makes it easy but yours is all e-sim e -SIM only i believe i've looked at the phone i don't see any port for a sim card okay so i it partially transferred my information from uh, this phone to that, uh, somehow I registered, pre-registered on Apple, and they knew I was already a AT and T yeah. customer. But I just had to call AT and T. I said, "Hey, I have a new phone. It's got an eSIM." 
mm-hmm. and they sent me some code and boom, service. It's on your way. Okay. Yep. Cool. I'm curious about that because I I wondered how hard it would be to swap because I'm so used to the chip. That what goes with the chip is usually if you you can save your contacts on the chip, but typically it's just your phone number. Yeah. And and that's what registers to the network yeah, when I you think swap them. Back in the day, we had the big SIM cards. I mean, we did. They weren't big, but they, they were had large your contacts yeah. and all your yeah. stuff on it. Yeah. Now they're micro. It's mainly yeah. you. Certain phones you can save contacts, but I don't even know if that is a thing anymore. But it definitely it's your phone number. Now I'm taking you way back. It used to be like you had a card for your Direct TV box. Oh, I remember those. Yeah, oh, I knew a yeah. guy that would hack those. Oh. Yeah, I wish he, I would have known him like 10 years ago. For like 100 bucks, this guy had all the stuff. He bought a flash thing like that could flash the chip. And yeah. he had all this code. Didn't want to ask where he got it. Uh, and it basically uh, flashed the card. And, and he'd have people. You'd only have to flash it once a year. But you would get everything. Oh like you didn't have to pay any like, and he could have you, saved me so much money, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was a huge business for him. He was at one point because he was in IT, he was making more money doing that on the side with friends and family than he was his job. Nice. <laughs> so, anyway, back to this. So, overall, uh, great experience. Yep. You sound like you're pretty happy with it. I know I love that in our group chat, we have blue bubbles finally. Uh, hey, I, I bl- blew Doug's mind with some screen effects that you can do, you know, all those little apple things or sending him my, uh, my Memoji, they call it, where you can actually have face tracks. Uh, yeah. That's kind of fun. So, so I, I'll kind of wrap it up, but I picked up the phone. I've been setting it up. Uh, the, there's cool things like getting the one-time password to set up your apps. Uh, when I get the, uh, well, I'm trying to think. When I get the message in the uh, Apple Messages, mm-hmm. it uh, pops up like right above the keyboard. Here's your code. Do you want to use it? And it fills it's it amazing. in. Yeah, that's for MFA. It's pretty awesome yeah. when they text you. I love oh that gosh. feature. Yeah, yeah. Um, the I other use that all the time. Are the AirPods? You know, I've got AirPods Switching. with the iPad. I stopped a video on my iPhone and then started it on the AirPod and. It or just um, transferred you mean, over. So it went from. So you went from. You you misspoke. I, I said that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So from you, my you're, iPhone to my iPad, iPad. and your with, yep. Yeah. And your headphone switched flawlessly. Yeah. And I'm like, Phew. well, it's really cool if you have a Mac. Uh, like a, it does that. It, like it can seamlessly switch between all the Apple devices, and you never have to touch anything or take. It just like knows what you're watching on. It's that's crazy. So that's a bonus right there. There are a couple things I'm missing from Android. Nothing too much, like a number row on the uh, keyboard, mm-hmm. which I mean, that's uh, yeah, like first world problems, whatever. Yeah, that's and then uh, I've taken a bunch of pictures. It looks really crisp and clear. The little uh, oh. sensitivity thing. How does is this? Hard to mess have with. you done this? Oh, what is that? Like, explain watch. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you're looking on the video, my watch here. See if I it, see it's checking the weather. No, I can't hear. We there it goes. Now it is. It, I think when you turn away from you, it knows you're not looking at it, so it's staying oh, blank. Okay. It it knows you're looking at you. Yeah. So like, I've got it to check the weather, and all I do is tap my your, uh, your index, index and, and your thumb. You tap and it checks the weather. What else? you can answer calls, right? You can. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, have that. Yeah. Someone sent me a request for walkie-talkie last night, so I was walkie-talking on my watch to someone. Did it work it well? Was amaz- I've oh, never. It amazing. I've never used it. It's just like the old Nextel push to talks. If you all remember those, did you have to push? Did you have to push to talk on the phone? How did it work? Yeah, so they're literally talking. I wait till they're done. I hold talk, and it's instantaneous. Really? Yep. We uh, got a walkie talkie back. Well, we're gonna do that. We get, I don't have my watch on me now, or we'd do it. Okay. But uh, dude, see, you've already look. Doug's brand new in the ecosystem. He's already diving into places I haven't gone yet. <laughs> So overall, you know, to get back to it a little serious, my uh, overall reaction is I like it a lot. Android, I may miss some of that customization. The only thing I really worry about is some custom ringtones. You know, I've set like for my mother, my wife, my brother, custom ringtones like that. Once I figure that out, I should be good to go. Yeah, you can get almost all of those. Now it costs you like, you know, 99 cents or a buck or something. Yeah, that's fine. But the cool thing is most of the ringtones are tied into Apple Music because Apple owns the licensing for so much music. Um, if you go into iTunes, search iTunes on it, and then type in ringtones, you will find every music and thing you can possibly imagine. So that, that'd be the way to do it. So. The one thing I've noticed so far, and I don't think I've given enough time, is battery life. 
I uh, charged it right after I got home from the mm-hmm. store, and it's uh, almost uh, noon today, and my battery is still amazing. So, oh, you no, you only charged it once so far. Yeah. So my Android, I have to, or I would, that's in the past, have to charge it every night. I'm hoping this, I have to charge it once or twice. Yeah. Uh, once a day, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I go charging all... charging my Android five, six times a day because it just... Are you serious? I'm oh, serious. That's so I, foreign to me. I'm a power user. I mean, I... I get it, dude. So, text, everything, so, all the time. So am I, man. Look, I went... Actually, I went to St. Louis earlier this week, too, for business. And I was at uh, a customer site thing where we were doing a presentation. Their Wi-Fi sucked all day long. Keep in mind, all the way there, GPS, all the way back. And while I'm in the meeting, I hotspotted my phone for my work computer to sync to it. And the whole time I ran the present, I think that night I got home, I was probably like at 60%. No. Like, and I my, use it all day. I even hotspotted all day my android would have been dead and i would have had to look for a place to charge it. that's insanity all right well dude you sound really happy i'm, I'm uh, yeah glad you did it i think it's a great experience it was really cool the stuff uh i'm excited about the stuff we'll learn when they did ios 18 they did not insert the ai intelligence stuff yet no, not, no. that will come later so i'm sure there'll be more stuff for us to talk about and discover uh so it'll be fun so man it will be. Uh, Long time coming. quick thing about iOS 18. It mm-hmm. is very Android-like where you can move your yeah. apps out wherever you want. That's new. Move some widgets. That's new, by the way. I like, like it. It helps. It's very easy for me to transition now from Android yeah. to iPhone with iOS 18. We had widgets, but what we couldn't do was arrange them. Like I actually just did that on my phone. Now, you can see our faces. See, the icons are now mm-hmm. yeah. uh, around our face. You couldn't do that before. It would always just lock up to the top, and you would be covered. So yeah, I've been putting them wherever I want. That's new. Being able to put them where you want is new, believe it or not. Yeah. So you, you entered at the right time. So, but yeah, Sorry. it'll be good. All right, man. Well, I think that does it for this uh, episode 28, yeah. man. Um, thank you for sharing. I think it's awesome. Welcome to the, the Apple cult. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, man, bring us home. Yeah. You know, uh, new technologies uh, without uh, this uh, podcast and you, I wouldn't have experienced the iPhone world. Uh, we're learning new things every day. We appreciate everybody listening and coming back each week. So yep. keep coming back. Now, appreciate your time, everybody. You have an awesome week, and we will catch you next week. Take care. See ya.